Okay, so I'm going to do a really comprehensive Garen guide today. Uh, and then I'm going to essentially uh, show you a game where I was able to carry Garen. Just to give you some context, um, I am I was one game away from my Master Tier promos, uh, primarily just playing Garen. And even on the two defeats that I had just before my, my Master Tier promos, I was the SVP. Like, uh, I was in... I was in these games and actually did pretty well. But you can see for the most part, um, I've played a lot of Garen. Uh, we ignore the Renekton game. But mostly played a lot of Garen. I played a little bit of support, uh, more Garen. This is the game that I'm going to show you here. This one, the MVP game. Um, mainly to break down... A, the game was absolutely ridiculous, but also to break down kind of how I played it. But I'm going to go through. I'm also going to show you a game where I played against Garen and how I deal with Garen. So if I'm playing against the Garen, I'm going to show you how what I usually do to deal with the Garen. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, Garen versus some of the more popular matchups. So I'm going to show you Garen versus Akali, Garen versus Darius, and probably Garen versus Fiora and Camille. Um, and I'm only going to show you the sort of the early laning phase in each one to show you how I play the laning phase. Um, just to help you out and give you a good idea. But for the most part, um, you can see the builds that I'm going. My build generally tends to vary depending on who I'm going against. Like, it'll usually always be Sunfire Aegis first, but sometimes I don't build Sunfire Aegis at all, depending on, like, the situation. Um, I'll either go Sunfire Aegis into Force of Nature, or I'll go Sunfire Aegis into Bramble vs. Deadman's Plate. It really depends on the type of, um, the type of matchup that I'm facing. But this is, like... A general build. I'll often go teleport these days over gargoyles or, or stone plate enchant. Um, stone plate enchant is better for team fighting, but obviously the, the teleport allows you to do more in terms of split map pressure. So it really depends what you what you're interested in. Uh, in terms of runes, I go grasp, champion, regeneration, and hunter. The reason I go champion is because I don't usually tend to die in the early laning phase. It's very difficult for Garen to die in the early laning phase. Um, there is there are two runes that you can consider in my opinion uh, you can go or three you can go triumph for the extra execute on your ultimate especially and you also restore 10 percent of your missing hp which is good because you build a lot of hp so you get a lot of value or you can go hunter vampirism which gives you some some um uh, vamp which is obviously good for kind of like getting you sort of topped up but you're not you don't deal that much damage so I wouldn't say it's massively worth it. I think Triumph or Champion are like the two runes that you should probably consider here. Um, in terms of this rune, Hunter Titan or Regeneration, but you don't have mana, so you're going to get 2% um, of your missing health every three seconds, which is pretty insane alongside Garen's already good Regeneration. And in the late game, when you've got a lot of HP, it gets a lot of value. And then in terms of your final rune here, it's either Hunter Genius or it's Sweet Tooth. Um, Hunter Genius... Obviously great for you you have no you have no mana, so you are purely gated by your cooldowns, so therefore Hunter Genius is gonna help. I take Sweet Tooth in matchups that I am not super confident in. Like in, for instance into Camille. Um Camille's a hard matchup. A good Camille will be a Garen most of the time. So I take Sweet Tooth because it helps me just sustain through that lane a little bit a little bit better. But I'm gonna um I'm gonna now show you some of the early laning phases versus those types of champions. Oh, G2A reference link and also giveaway like comment and subscribe right let's get into uh, some of those early laning phases and we can talk a little bit about uh, what i do in the early laning phase and how i consistently win lane as garen i win lane almost every single game and it's a few simple tricks how i do it okay the first trick and hopefully you guys can see me drawing on the screen here the first trick okay is whenever you're on the side of the jungler that needs to help the jungler. So whenever you're usually on this side and they're starting at red, you need to make sure that you do not miss minions. And I'm going to show you it from the other perspective as well. But I have won so many lanes by just having a single minion advantage as a Garen. Getting level two is extremely important. So I want to make sure that I get to the lane before this first minion dies. And you can see here that even though I take a Q to the face, it was more important that I didn't lose that minion because I do not want to get behind level two, or at least I don't want to be like one minion behind at level two. So the other thing that helps me win lane is using Grasp of the Undying properly. Whenever I have Grasp of the Undying proc, I just want to use it to uh, essentially slap people on the head. Now this Darius is actually pretty solid, um, but every time I have Grasp of the Undying, I want to do this. I want to use my first ability. And again, Grasp of the Undying, I'm going to proc it again. I'm going to keep spinning. You can see my Grasp of the Undying proc is there. And then I proc it again. And you see? Like, that, I mean, like, that was just so ridiculously easy. Should we go Should we go back and watch that again? Like, I'm going to break it down a little, a little bit further with some more details. Give me a second. Okay, so watch this, right? 
I've got a Grasp of the Undying proc. I want to use it. So, one second. Yeah, I want to use it, so I get it on his head, right? I'm not level two yet, so I have to be a little careful about getting in, because if he's got his pull, he's going to try and pull me in, which he does. I hit level two. He does get the heal, but I'm spinning. Spinning keeps me in combat for my Grasp of the Undying proc. Uh, it's really important. I run at him with the Grasp of the Undying. He can't pull me back in because he's already used it. Again, keep myself in combat. Proc another Grasp of the Undying. Spin. Ignite. And then he uses the barrier. Keep going with the Ignite. And then proc another Grasp of the Undying. I just want to pause here and tell you that this, in combination with this ability, this is the single most ridiculous combination you can get for in the laning phase. Grasp of the Undying, when you have it activated with... Your first ability on Garen is absolutely nutty. If you generate combat by either attacking minions or getting taking damage, as soon as you have this, you want to activate this ability and hit them on the head. Okay? And then after that, you spin. And you spin until you get another one of these, until you get number two. And then you stop spinning and then you basic attack them. And then if they if they want to try and chase you, you use this ability to reduce damage as you walk away. And then this ability comes back off cooldown. You might still be in combat for your third stack of it. Okay? But the, the, the absolute imperative combo with Garen is this ability. So you build stacks, you press this ability, you run at them with your judgment spin, and then you get another stack of Grasp of the Undying and you basic attack them. It's almost untradeable. Very, very few champions in the game can trade against that. The only person that can can is Camille because she gets her shield and sort of negates a lot of your damage. You might have also noticed, and this is something that not a lot of Garen players actually do enough. I was dealing more damage to Darius as he was running away because I was critically striking for 125% damage because it was hitting him at the edge. So that was how I won the, the laning phase as, versus a Darius. And Darius, actually, as long as you don't, as long as if, if Darius casts his circle ability, run into it as a Garen, hit him on the head in here. He, he get Darius gets healing in the area that's around him. If you run in, he doesn't get healing and you actually win the trade. The one thing that you should be aware of, though, is if Darius builds max stacks up on you, you should, or at least he's, he's built three or four, use this ability and actually get out the trade. One of the things that if, if you take a bad trade versus Darius is that you're going to lose if he hits you max stacks on you. So you want to take a short trade using this ability and this ability um, and then walk away using your second ability. If he builds stacks up on you, you actually end up losing that trade. So you have to be really careful. Um, and if you get out of the if you get out of the fight and drop the stacks with this taking less damage, you're also going to regenerate all your health because you have regeneration and your passive. So you don't have to worry too much about taking a bad trade because you've got the Garen passive to work with. So that's the, that was the lane versus Darius. Again, really simple versus Darius. You win early trades, mostly. And if you, as long as you don't get hit by the heal and he doesn't build stacks upon you, uh, if you take a short trade doing the little combo that I said, you'll win that lane really easily. Darius is actually a relatively easy matchup for Garen. Now let's go on to another matchup. So Camille is actually a pretty hard matchup for you. Um, with her shield, she generally tends to win out most trades. However, with a Camille, one of the things that I like to try and do is push early on. Again, grasp the undying stack with my first ability. You saw that. She obviously can heal back with the leg sweep, but I'm trying to hit level two here. The reason I'm trying to hit level two is because if I can level two trade versus her, then just, like just when she walks up to the minion, look, she's walking up to the minion wave. I just spin her, right? This is the way that I try to win lane versus Camille. You can't win if you go even with her. So you just need to make sure that you're trying to push the lane much more quickly than she is. And a little bit similar to, to Darius, when she does, I'm going to pause it, right? A little bit similar to Darius. When she does her leg sweep, there are two areas. This heals her, this does not. So you can use your first ability when she does that to run into the area that doesn't heal her and just smack her on the head. Okay, it's a similar thing. But I won this lane at level two again. But Garen's level two is really strong. Like this ability plus this ability for most people is untradeable. And Garen also pushes the lane very easily. If Camille takes her her leg sweep first, I actually think she loses the lane. If she takes her first ability first, I think she wins the lane. So this Camille actually just took the wrong ability in my opinion. Um, but I just pushed the lane and... One of the things that I'm very, very keen on is if you saw Camille walk to the to my minions to try and to try and attack them, right? If if you are in a position of dominance, like I was level two to her level one, if she walks up to the minions, just just smack her, just bloody hit her on the head. 
Like, she, she's she's disrespecting your level two if she walks up to the minion wave to try and hit level two herself. So that's why I just spam on the spot. Like, I was like, okay, you want to hit the minions? We'll just take take the, the full damage of the spin. And that's how I've ended up doing well so far. But obviously, the, the lane's not over yet. But, um, you know, that was a, that was kind of a way that I got, got an edge. Now, I'm obviously just going to ward because it's, you know, most junglers go like this. So I want to make sure I get caught out. And she, again, just, like, disrespects where I am. Um, she manages to get the healing off there. I just couldn't go any further because of the turret. But she still took a bad trade overall. And the problem with my, my lane here is I'm going to want to push it into tower. But if she steps up, I don't mind just activating my first ability and bonking her on the head. Like, if she's going to try and get this minion, bonk. Oh, no, I bonked the minion. Okay, that should have been bonked on her head. That would have been much better if it was bonked on her head. But, you know, the same thing applies. If she steps up, it's okay to just walk into tower range and just hit her on the head. You do more damage than you'll take from a single tower shot. Now, clearly, I can see the monkey here, but uh, I'm not really bothered because I have a huge minion wave. So even if the monkey comes to try and gank me, we have a big minion wave. And honestly, the Camille is pretty low. So I, I kind of just I show the monkey that I know he's there and then I end up backing off. But the problem for me is I haven't got I haven't got the lane in a good spot right now. So actually punishing the, this Camille is really hard. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to shove the lane as quickly as possible with my spin. Um... And just make it so that, you know, I'm putting as much pressure on Camille. Trying to reset the lane here. This is what I'm trying to do. More, more importantly, I'm trying to reset the lane. And again, don't mind taking a tower shot to bonk her on the head with my uh, Grasp of the Undying first ability. Um, and now she's going to back. I I'm going to just sit here and spin. Like I've, I Her backing now is really good for me. Because it just signifies that I've already done well in this laning phase. And if I'm now, like, past this point in the laning phase where, um, you know, I'm at risk to the Camille's early trades. I feel like this is a relatively good outcome. I didn't kill her. But I've denied her loads of minions, uh, and I'm actually ahead. If I look at Camille, I'm actually ahead. Yeah, I'm ahead by about 400 gold. So that's like a good that's a good start to the laning phase for me. Like I said, I'd say that's a relatively good start to the laning phase, um, and that's how I generally tend to approach Camille's. The most the the other so, so I try and push for level two. If I don't get a level two with Camille, if Camille starts first ability and actually tries to take takes take, tries to take trades with me at level one, then. Uh, I end up just trying to be a bit more passive and I try to I play the laning phase much more defensively. But this is how I ended up winning versus the Camille. Okay, this is another Darius matchup. And again, I'm going to show you, I, I want to get to the lane before I miss a minion. I don't mind if I miss the gold. I'm more 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 important to not miss the, uh, to miss the experience. But this Darius was late, okay? So number one rule of Baron lane, never miss a minion. Never, ever miss a minion. So I'm going to show you again with the Grasp of the Undying procs. I'm building up stacks now. Slap him on the head. Didn't get the Grasp of the Undying proc there because it timed out. But again, like I'm about to hit level two here, right? About to hit level two. And as soon as I have a Grasp of the Undying, if he steps up, like he's going to step up, slap him on the head and just spin on him. Like he stepped up to the minion. Like this is absolutely ludicrous. And look, I've, I've got, I walked back, I walked back into his, uh, I walked back into his heel. So I didn't let him get the heal. I, if, you, if you notice, I walked back in to Darius to make sure he didn't get the heal. And he's already had to take the, the, the honey fruit. Like, Punish people that step up to the minions when you have the advantage. Don't let them farm for free, which is what I did with this Darius. Like Darius came to try and hit level two and get a, and last hit the minion. That was greedy. He should have just hit level two naturally, and he would have had a better hit, a better chance versus me in the laning phase here. So now I'm in complete control of the laning phase. And again, you know, I always want to be very careful. Um, walking over towards the river scuttler, I put a ward down. This Camille actually went. I think she went straight like this instead of going to her blue buff. So I obviously have to be a little careful here. Uh, and you can see that she is on this side of the map still. Now, he pulls me in. Not really sure why. He has got a level advantage on me here, but I'm still incredibly strong. Uh, this is where you back off, right? Okay, so I have full stacks. He's actually really strong versus me now, but I still have the healing of my, my plant, right? So I run away. There's no way I take a trade when I've got full stacks of Darius on me. So we're, now we're, we're kind of relatively even, but look, I've got regeneration. And again, I'm just going to slap him. He's pulled me in here. I'm going to use the edge of my blade. He gets the healing. But I don't mind, because I'm just going to force him to flash. Again, you can't trade versus a Garen as a Darius most of the time unless you're able to build up full stacks. And that's enough to force him back. Now, I'm just going to clear this wave. I'm going to push up. I'm going to back off here. So, items that I build. Why have I built this and why have I built this? I build this versus Fiora, Camille, and Darius. Um, they all have healing. And Bramble Vest, when they hit you, reduces healing. Also, they're all da they're all um, physical damage dealers, so you get the armor from it as well. So that's why I build Bramble Vest early versus people like Darius, Fiora, and Camille. It's a really important item upgrade.
So we're both level five now. Well, I'm just slightly ahead in experience versus level six. Now at level five, you do have to be more mindful. Darius can win with his ultimate. Um, it's really all about the trade that happens before you start to build up. I use my damage reduction here again for the same reason. Now he has built up stacks, but I'm feeling pretty confident that he's not going to be able to kill me, which he's not. And then Lee Sin comes in and gets the kill. So I felt pretty confident that he wasn't going to be able to kill me because I had so much HP. And he obviously used the desperation ultimate because I used mine. And again, what am I doing here? I'm just clearing the minion wave to shove it into tower. I'm actually also going to steal his fruit away. Um, and I'm, I'm going to try and get a single plate. So if I can get a single plate here, that's really good because I'm going to go back to base with a load more gold. Like, watch my gold by getting a single plate if I can get it. Come on. Yeah. Got a bunch more gold. So it's a nice little injection of gold. Uh, and I'm going to be able to go back to base now with 1,400. Uh, although I say that, Darius, is, uh, there, is, there is also merit for me staying here. Uh, the reason that there's merit for me staying here is because uh, I have got a level advantage on Darius, quite a significant one. So again, just looking to use my Grasp of the Undying procs. Just spinning, I have it going right now. Now I have to be a little careful, but he hasn't got his ultimate cooldown right now. So I'm not worried about getting executed, although I have to flash because he's built the stacks up. A little bit silly of me, honestly. Um... But I knew, that he, I knew that he didn't have his ultimate because he just used it and didn't kill me. So there's no way that he had that back off cooldown. So I knew that he didn't have his ultimate. And for Garen, it's okay to take awful trades because of this ability, like the regeneration. It is okay to take bad trades. So I'm not going to be greedy this time. I'm going to go back. Um, and because the, the, because the dragon has spawned, I decided to walk over towards the dragon pit. And as you can see here, I'm just going to use my ultimate on the Camille, take her down. And I'm really tanky at this point. As you can see. He's zoning out, zoning out the um, zoning out the Zaya. Taking a lot of damage, but I managed to escape. And I decided that, well, I'm probably going to get killed by the Ari, so I might as well go back and try and trade onto the Janna, which I do. In the meantime, I lose my turret. But, you know, our team's in a pretty good spot. And obviously, as you know from the match history, I ended up winning this game. So I feel like I did a good job versus Darius in lane. Obviously, Darius... Um, Darius got a free lane because I wrote it to rotate it to the dragon. But he's much further behind, uh, you know, than than most Dariuses would be. And I think even though I didn't get the kill, Lee Sin ended up picking up a kill. I feel like I had a relatively good laning phase versus him. And I'm now 2 1 and 3 on the Garen. All right. Let's see if this. Uh, so I'm playing. I, I said I'd show you what I do versus Garens. Um, and already, I can tell you, I'm going to pause it here. That the enemy Garen has mistake, made mistake number one of the Baron laning phase. He has missed a minion. That means I'm going to hit level two first. And because I've taken Drunken Rage and I'm going to go um, Body Slam second, I can slap him and slap him. Level two, really easily. So that's mistake number one of the Baron lane. Never miss a minion. Early trades are really important for the health of the laning phase. So he is going to make it for the second minion, but he's already a little bit further behind than he needs to be. Mistake number two. Why would you do this ability? Why would you do this ability first? Okay. I understand why some Garens do this, but um, this ability first is int. The reason that you, you, Garen is so good right now is level one, you can take your first ability and slap him in the head with Grasp of the Undying. I don't know why you wouldn't do it. Anyway, just watch. I'm just going in, taking Grasp stacks. And again, I'm just zoning him away from the minions. I'm taking some damage here, but I'm Gragas. I'm going to be able to regenerate HP much like much like Garen will be, although a little bit less consistently. He spins in. And again, I'm not really bothered about landing the body slam. I'm just trying to get Grasp of the Undying stacks going, and I do. This is okay. Like, this is okay. Like, it may look like I'm losing out on the trades here, but I'm actually in a relatively good spot. Well, it's really loud first blood and enemy saying. So I'm going to go back. I've taken rege I take regeneration and sweet tooth on Gragas. So I'm going to go back and pick up the honey fruit. I'm in a really, really good spot in terms of HP. Garen has regenerated all of his HP back because that's what Garen does. But again, like one of the ways that I try to deal with Garen as a Gragas is... I'm going to pause it. When Garen runs in, so when he uses his charge first ability, channel your drunken rage because that means he can't silence it. And when he hits you, he's going to do reduced damage and you can trade back with an empowered basic attack. So whenever he charges in, make sure you char uh, make sure you empower your um, your drunken rage because that means you'll be able to trade back versus him nicely. Like this, you see that? Like it's it's an even trade. If you have drunken rage ready to go when he tries to charge in with his first ability, it's an even trade. 
And if you have Grasp of the Undying, it's perfectly okay to just step up. And he's just ignited me here. So, like, that that's okay. Like, he's just ignited me. It's, it, I don't know if I really want to dive this guy. Honestly, I don't know if I really want to dive this guy. He's... You can see that the, the, the Kha'Zix is like, I want to dive, but I don't really want to dive, if I'm honest with you. So not really worth it to go for the the dive here, unless unless he can like make a crazy dive happen. But that's okay. So I'm level five now. I would say that for the most part I've done pretty well in the laning phase here. You can actually see that my Kazix is in a little bit of an awkward spot. Garen has turned up. I have to just run in and save the day. I force out the flash of the Garen. Not entirely sold on the um on the Kazix, but you know it is what it is. He has blue buff, so he regenerates a load of HP and actually walks over to... I'm just going to watch him. He's, is he waiting for the Camille to come back here? I don't know. Either way, we kind of got out of that scot-free. Uh, if you look at my gold, I'm 2,300 to 1,800. I'd say that's been a been a pretty successful laning phase. kind of want to see what's going on here because he's still... He's, oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Rip Camille, dude. Rip Camille, and he's going to lose the blue, the the, uh, the 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 red uh, blue red buff. That was nice. Okay, so this is like a nice. This is like a nice first ability, uh, first item versus uh, Garen. Garen for some reason has gone armor versus me, which is ridiculous. Don't think I'm playing with the most experienced Garen player here, but nonetheless, we're maxing Drunken Rage first. You can trade very effectively with Garen with this ability. You can see, just trying to get Grasp of the Undying stacks off. With my with my Barmy Cinder, I win this trade. Like win these trades pretty much all the time. Slap him, slap him. Should cask him, cask him. Yeah, there we go. Walk straight over, and then we slap him in the head. Okay, so you've kind of seen how I deal with with uh, Garen in the laning phase. Uh, we'll go on to our full game now. We'll go on to our actual game where I played versus an Akali. So I don't know if you just saw, uh, I kind of I kind of realized I came into this a little bit late. Um we we burnt Evelyn's flash early on. Now this is this this game was absolutely ridiculous. Um because Evelyn just decides to turn back up. And and like I'm late to the lane here, but for good reason, because for some reason there's an Evelyn just she's not got flash, by the way. She's not got flash. So she's just gonna end up dying. Don't know why the Teemo uh, I don't know why the Teemo flashed for that, but see I end up losing um early level two because um because the Evelyn invaded and I, ha I had to help the Lee Sin because there's no way I could let the Lee Sin go. So I've obviously lost level two here now. Akali did me a good job of just pushing the lane. Um, versus Akali, you just need to be careful of that empowered basic attack, right? When this is up, you don't really want to get into trading range with her because she'll out trade you most of the time. So again, I'm happy to silence um, and kind of just take these short trades with Akali. So what you'll notice is whenever I have a Grasp of the Undying proc up, I am just looking to um, essentially use my first ability and bonk her on the head, but then very quickly run away. Now here, I'm very happy to just try and zone her out. Uh, she's had to take the Honey Fruit already here because she took a couple of bad trades. You just need to be very mindful of Akali using that first ability. The big trade that Akali has versus most other melee top laners is that first ability um, into Empowered Basic Attack. So for me, like I'm just trying to avoid Akali getting a getting an empowered basic attack every single time that she goes for a trade. Like this, I want I don't want I don't want to go near her now. I just want to make sure she's like if she walks towards me, I walk away. Just make sure she's not in range of landing that empowered basic attack. Um I'm happy to take an empowered basic attack trade when I have a grasp of the undying proc up. Like this now, I'm just gonna slap her on the head again. Keep spinning. She does proc the um she does proc the thing. I use my damage reduction as soon as she comes in, but she pops the shroud. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and take that trade. I'm gonna back off and take the healing because I, I know that she doesn't have hers and I have mine. And now she's really like watch, I'm gonna flash on her head. Have to ignite her. She went into she went into went out of vision, but like that was so like so cocky of the car the Akali. In, in terms of trading with Akali, what you're looking to do. I have no idea what's going on top side of the map, by the way. We also have a Teemo mid, just so you know. Like, we have a Teemo mid. So, this game was clearly going to be a little difficult from the outset. Um, when you're looking to trade versus Akali, like in the in the, in the the Baron lane, um, you're wanting to take short trades and avoid her basic attacks. So, when she uses that first ability, just walk away. Just walk away and reset. You don't have to be there. You don't have to, you don't have to take the trade with her. Um, 
But when I have a Grasp of the Undying Prox up and I have a first ability, I just want to bonk him on the head for a lot of damage. Le literally, legitimately, Garen, there's a reason I'm doing well with Garen. He's really easy to play. Like, I'm not the most... I'm nearly 30, guys. I'm a fucking boomer. Like... It, it, I'm not the most mechanically gifted player in Wild Rift. Like a lot of, a lot of, I, I queue into so many people in, in game. They're like, oh, you can't be the reading scoundrel. You suck. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a normal player. Like I, I play like a normal person. I'm not some sort of God at Wild Rift. I just know a lot about League of Legends and Wild Rift. And I like to try and use that knowledge to help me and help you. Um, you know, th but the reason I like Garen is he's not that complex. Like I don't have to be really like try hard with him. And you see here now, I'm actually really confident that I win this. I sidestep this shroud. I silence her down. I'm going to spin and then Evelyn turns up. Uh, I think I would have won that trade if I had the ignite up. What really on reflection, what I really should have done was wait for the ignite. I'm actually going to speed up parts of this game um, just so I can get past the boring bits and get back to the lane. So that was a little bit annoying. Like Evelyn just turned up at the abs absolute correct moment. And actually, if you look at Evelyn, she's doing some serious work right now. Despite what was happening level one, this Evelyn is kind of popping off. Um, she's like putting a lot of pressure on our bot lane. Um, I'm going to go to the, the overall scoreboard now so you can kind of see the item builds opening up. Now, I decide that it, it, it's much better for me to rotate for dragon here. Like we can actually contest this dragon. If you go and have a look at the dragon right now, they're pretty low. They have a vein. Like at this stage of the game, Vayne is pretty easily abusable and the, and the dragon is still relatively high HP. So I'm pretty confident that we can we can make this trade. So I just I just run in. I'm Garen. I'm pretty happy to just run in here and I just use my ultimate to kill the Akali. Yes, I'm very skilled. I can press a single button. And then the Zed, just here, over the wall. I'm going to spin, make sure he dies. There's the, there's the Evelyn. Double kill for me because I made that rotate to Drake. Um... The only reason I made that rotate to Drake, by the way, there is there are two things you need to think about when you're a Baron laner and you're thinking about rotating to Drake. The first is, am I am I am I a champion that's good at taking towers? Like I remember a Fiora, a Camille, a Darius, even like taking a tower is pretty easy. A Garen with only one point in his first ability because the first ability you level last is clearly not going to take towers super super quickly. Um, so I thought, well, okay. I looked. I looked at what was going on at the Baron, the Dragon Pit. I decided the Dragon was high enough HP, and also the rest of my team was in a relatively good position to actually contest. And I thought, okay, if I go over there, I can actually contest. I had my ultimate up as well. Another really big deal. The Garen's ultimate is off cooldown way too quickly, by the way. Um, no spoilers. He is getting nerfed next patch. I'm not going to tell you what is happening next patch, but he is getting nerfed. I'm just going to ult her like this. You see, nothing she can do. Um, he is getting nerfed next patch. I'll tell you about it when the patch notes come out. But yes, Garen is getting nerfed. Like if you if you if you've been worried about Garen, um, he's getting nerfed. So I went Merc treads, and I know that um, and I know that my boy Hell's Devil probably is uh, is is paining paining inside right now for me going Merc treads. But um, if you look at their comp, true damage. If he if he attacks me, he's wasting his time and lots and lots of uh, lots of magic damage. Uh, as well as magic damage so you know I, I i decided that actually it's better for me to go merc treads here because overall i'm going to get more value out of it because because evelyn doesn't really basic attack that much uh i'm probably going to got not get hit by too many akali basic attacks i'm probably going to more get hit by her abilities he's got aoe magic damage abilities and she deals true damage and also has a stun so i just thought merc treads was the best choice here um because I'm going to go into Force of Nature as well. So I just need to be... With Garen, you need to just be looking to manage your HP as much as possible. So here, I want to wait till I start regenerating. As you can see, I'm regenerating health now. Um, and here's, here's like the, the, the Evelyn just a little bit overextended. But I have to back off because the, the vein turns up and my team's not really in a very strong position. So I have to back off here. Um, their entire bot lane rotated down for the Rift Herald and they haven't been able to get it. And so in the meantime, my Kaiser at the top is just getting free farm and free experience, which is obviously really good. So that's we get the blind oh i'm like what on earth was that i think i just just caught the i was trying to flash forward and i just caught the edge and went over which was honestly the most cringe thing i've ever seen in my life so i'm trying to just zone out the evelyn here the unfortunately she does end up stealing the uh the rift herald we end up getting the kill though which is me getting a rampage um get the kill on the zed as well which is awesome that's a kill going up to teemo nice flash by the way from the the brawn to try and start the the, the, uh, the, the passive stacks on the uh, the vein but we can't actually catch up to her but in the meantime akali's been split pushing this top lane the entire time and i think that means we end up losing the first turret of the game Let's have a look over at Carly. 
Oh, no. No, that's good, actually. That's really good. Not losing first turret of the game is a really big deal. Uh, and Braum's actually rotating up there to try and defend against it. You can see that Kais is going up as well. Now, I was trying to back. This, uh, this cheeky little Alistair just stopped me from backing here. What I really want to do now is go and push this tower. Because, well, actually, no. I'm going to reset for Drake. We have a Drake. Um, depends if I buy teleport or not. I don't have the gods by teleport. I buy dead man's plate here, actually. Okay, interesting. I thought I was going for force of nature. It looks like I'm actually stacking the armor and just saying a little bit of magic resist is fine. But stacking the armor because of the, the vein, I guess. Um, I think you go... I go dead man's plate now in this game because I'm actually 5, 1, and 3. And I'm like, well, I can't go full tank because I actually want to carry. So going dead man's plate gives you more carry potential as a tank player. I'm not really bothered about killing the Zed. What I am bothered about is just pushing this wave in. Um, my team's dead on the top side of the map. So Dragon is an absolute no-no here. There's no there's no real point going for Dragon. Or at least I don't really see much point in rotating for Dragon right now. What I should do is just clear this wave. Um, and then... Uh, by the way, if anyone ever mentions weren't you going to one-trick Camille to Master, I'm banning you from the channel. Because <laughs> that didn't go very well. So I'm, I'm going to take this tower clearly. You can see there's like some sort of memes happening over here at the Baron of the Dragon Pit. But I, I like Arkaista was never going to be in a position for this. So actually contesting this dragon was probably one of the most ridiculous ideas I think we've ever had. So I decided to take the tower and get the first tower of the game, which I think is a reasonable trade for an ocean dragon. And actually, I'm going to push this wave in the mid lane as well. Now, Akali, unfortunately, dies because she walked over a chemo stream and I decided to just ult her. He ults me. I use my damage reduction. Like, look how much, how, look how little damage the Zed just did to me with what, what felt like a full combo. Um, this ability is nutty broken. That's why you max it second, by the way. Just to give you some context and what it looks like. Damage reduction by 30% for the, for the four seconds. So reduce damage for five seconds. And for the first one second, damage reduced by 60% and Garen gains 60% tenacity. I know that you don't need any more tenacity because of your Mercury Treads, but I wanted the magic resist realistically. Okay, so again, they're all just like going on me. I'm not taking any damage whatsoever. Uh, Teemo Shroom's actually doing some, some work here. And you can see I'm just like, I'm very, very confident to step up because I feel like people can't really kill me. There's not, not an easy way to kill me at this point in time. I have 2,000 gold in the bank as well. So I'm just going to spin on him. I don't really expect to kill him because we have a lot of people coming in. They, they ult in onto the Kaiser. I flash away because I thought they were ulting in onto me. Uh, the Akali is actually really strong right now. So I'm going to back off, wait for the Ignite to drop. She gets over the wall somehow. And as you can see here, I just have to be a little careful. And I ult, I ult him on the head because... For some reason, he decides to jump on, jump onto me. But we're not in a strong... Our team's doing kind of... Well, we're not that far behind, but it feels like we're doing really bad. Like, it feels like... We're, at this point in the game, you can't see the gold, obviously. It just feels like we're losing all the fights. Um, this Akali's kind of popping off in these team fights. The, the Vayne's kind of getting a free roam. Um, as you can see here, I'm deciding not to go any further versus the Evelyn and the Akali. I'm just trying to zone them away. We have a, we have a Teemo mid, which is obviously memes. I ignite the Vayne, which should take her out but she manages to get through the redemption as well and i died to the akali that was a really really well-timed stasis and an amazingly timed redemption from the alistair and our entire team just basically ends up dying here i don't know what lee sin was doing he just decides to walk in that, that was a weird interaction it does kill the akali which is nice um but yeah it feels like we're not in a great spot right now and i pick up a thorn mail why am i going so much armor when they've got an evelyn and uh, i suppose okay I suppose, like, Vayne's my biggest threat as the game goes on, so itemizing for her now is okay if I just take the Mercury Treads. Like, if, if Evelyn and Akali are attacking me, they're not attacking Teemo and Kaisa, which is good, right? So the magic resist, is, magic resist is whatever. But the next item, for sure, has got to be Force of Nature, for sure. Because it's so good versus Evelyn and so good versus Akali. Like, surely got to be Force of Nature. So I'm, I'm protecting this turret with my life right now. This turret is my baby. I don't want it to die. Um, and Zed is really, really keen to kill it. So I'm just kind of running over and clearing waves whenever I can. Obviously, like, we're getting to this point in the game now where if you look at Vayne's items, she's, like, nearly three items. Now, they catch me out here. I'm obviously... But look at me. I'm just so tanky. Like, they go all in on me, but I'm just so ridiculously tanky. Like, they, they, they can't do anything. And then, like, Vayne walks over a Teemo stream here, takes a bunch, a bunch of damage, and then I'm just like, okay, my health's all back. So they, they all end me. And I still just came out with like 50% HP. That's how ridiculous Garen is. And especially how ridiculous building massive resistances with this item is as well. 
So we just we're not going to go for Baron clearly, but we are just trying to sort of zone away. Like we want to get mid lane prior as well. Like we only oh wait we are going for Baron. Okay, but well, we're going for Baron. At least we forced the fight here, right? Like we're forcing the fight on Baron. This is actually a good idea. We forced the fight on Baron. I immediately ult the Gallister just to kill him. Um, unfortunately. The rest of my team can't really get on the vein. I'm just like, I'm kind of like spinning to try and buy some time, but you can see how good Vayne is against the Garen. Like that true damage is ridiculous. So the fight, I think was a good idea. My ultimate usage wasn't particularly strong, but I really felt like my team were in a stronger position. So I just thought I'd ult the Alistair to kill him. But um, yeah, that didn't go very well. I'm just going to speed up because I'm dead for like a long time. Wait, where am I? Here we go. Right. Here we go. Now, for sure, we're going for Force of Nature. I've gone for the Gargoyle enchant this game. Um, the reason being is I want to have, I, I need more team fight presence. Like having a teleport this game would be good, but if I don't have this, I think I die to Vayne too often. The, one of the biggest counters against Vayne is just having a bit more HP. Um, so yeah, I need the HP versus Vayne. That was a really nice ultimate from Zed. He still ends up dying though. He just, he, he dodges out of my, my ult with his ult, which is really nice, but he still ends up dying. A little bit of an int from him. This now should allow us to push down the mid lane. Like, we really need this mid lane tower. You can see how hard it is for us to get any pressure on the map without having this mid lane tower. Nice ult from, um, from Keys. That buys us the time to go for this tower. And at the, I'm just on the front line. I pop the Gargoyle enchant. Trying to be a bit of a nuisance. You can see I'm just trying to zone Vayne away. But Akali just super strong. Nice stun, though. Gets the Akali down. She ends up dying eventually as well. I have 11 seconds, by the way, until my ultimate. And I just, I just have to flash away at this point. Um, Timo's not in the fight. Vayne's like almost untouchable when the Alistair is babysitting her. Um, I take the fruit because they could very easily try and just go for Baron here. That's why I'm kind of hanging around, kind of hanging around the Baron pit because they're low, but they probably feel that they're confident enough to go for it with the Evelyn and the Vayne. I'm just like, well, I can just, I can literally just ult the Alistair here. So I just, I just walk in and ult the Alistair and I'm just like spinning on the spot. And then that's enough to stop. That's enough to stop this going on. That very nearly kills me. And then the vein kind of flashes in and gets the kill. Um, we, we we played that so well right until the end. Um, but now, like, I think I think the, the Evelyn is it, it, Evelyn and the, the, the Zed are now too low to really feasibly go for the for the, the, the Baron. And a nice little Teemo stream at the back there stops, the, you know, gives us some vision. So we stopped the Baron. Could have gone a lot better. If I just run away, it would have gone a lot better. Um, but it's okay. I'm going to speed up again because I'm dead forever again. Okay, so there's a bit of a fight going on here, again, around the Baron Pit. Guard, I, I pop my stone plate. I'm just sat on the front line. I'm trying to buy time. Really, what should be happening when I'm doing this, what should be happening is is they should be trying to kill the Vayne, but they weren't. Luckily, these Teemo Shrooms have been kind of absolutely insane, and I just then ult the Evelyn. So I'm like, well, I might as well just, you know, kill a couple of people off here. So I get two kills. I ult the Evelyn. I managed to kill off the uh, the uh, the Zed, and that's okay. Like two kills off the back of that fight. I'm a level 11, five and seven. It's just the Vayne left. They can't go for the Elder Infernal because pretty much their entire team, except for Akali and Vayne, are dead. And we still have the Teemo and the Braum up. So it'd be a really risky, uh, a really risky uh, thing to go for the um, the Elder Dragon. Now, unfortunately, what ends up happening is that my Teemo and my Braum just you know, just die. And so they're here at the they're here at the Elder Dragon trying to go for it. I'm chasing the vein away. Um, great condemn from her. I just die. Nothing I can do. Um, Heiser now. Trying to buy some time. Nice stasis. But ends up dying because they sort of chain all their CC. And that's going to be essentially a free Elder Drake for them now. Keeping an eye on this guy. He could try and go for the steal. Elder Dragon would be like a game winner for us. Like getting the Elder Dragon would be insane. There are only three people in the pit. He's obviously just waiting for his time to go for the steal. Come on, mate. I can't remember if you do it or not. I honestly can't. I can't even remember how this game went. Oh, it's way too early. It's way too early. Oh, but he stole it. They smited so early. Lee Sin, you monster. Look at that. MVP right here. MVP. Played played pretty garbage. 3-0, 3, 0, 3 8, 4 all game. Absolutely garbage most of the game, but redeemed himself. Redeemed himself. Ally slain. Okay, so Elder Dragon now actually means that we can fight. Elder Dragon now means that we deal a significant amount of damage. It gives us a huge amount of um, uh, scaling damage with the Elder Infernal. Really, really good. Now, they're going for Baron, and I don't blame them, because if you look at this wave, like, look at this wave here. This is huge, and Zed's just going to be pushing it. So, they could win the game if we try and contest this Baron. 
which right now I am contesting this Baron. That was a really lovely headbutt. Thank you, Alistair. You actually helped me. We do have to end up backing off here, though. Someone needs to back anyway for the, for the Zed, because he can actually... Zed could have just ended the game, but for some reason he's teleporting. Honestly, Zed could have ended the game, I think. It would have been close. Could have been a, could have been a split push a win for the Zed. They had such a big minion wave to work with. Uh, but we do get enough uh, enough of a win here to sort of say, well, we can probably force the Baron. So I just start the Baron. So I'm like, well, come on, guys. We can do this. It's really easy. Um, they burnt a lot there. A lot of them have gone back to base. We have a Kaiser, so we can take it really quickly. However... We kind of have to turn because the, the, the Akali Dome jumps into the middle of the fight. So I kill the Akali. Just kind of zoning away the vein. Here comes the Evelyn. We kill her <laughs> with my ultimate because it's ridiculous. Uh, obviously, Zed ults me. Not much I can do. Uh, I don't get taken down because Stoneplate Enchant and uh, is really ridiculous. And I get the GA of the vein. Now, I, I don't want anything to do with this fight. I'm running away. Don't really know why Lee Sin does. I'm trying to regen as much HP as I can. And then we just run away. I'm, I'm pretty tanky. If you look at Teemo as well in the top lane, I'm trying to stop the Vayne from backing easily because I'm regenerating health at this point. So I'm trying to stop the Vayne from backing too easily. And you can see Teemo's just in the top lane doing whatever the hell mid Teemo does. Um, but yeah, I played that fight pretty well. Played that fight pretty well. Like we kill off the, uh, the Evelyn before she can get into the pit and get a good ultimate off. Killed the uh, Akali very early on just by spinning in her shroud. It's one of the reasons why I quite like Garen into Akali. You can just spin in her shroud. Uh, and obviously now we are in the point in the game where we, we're kind of looking at really severe late game builds. Like, look at my item build. I'm, I've gone for I've gone for Randuins as well, by the way. It stops the attack speed of the Vayne. Um, slowing the attack speed of the Vayne is really good. You could also go Frozen Heart, but I prefer Randuins on um, Garen for the HP. But I am full build now. Like, I am full build Garen. I'm not going to get any tankier and any better than this. Um, so, yeah. And the, and the skill with Garen in the late game is just looking for the right target to ultimate. And essentially, what your main your main point is to just zone away. Like that right there. Kill the Evelyn before she can even ult. My, my main job is to zone away the Vayne. Like, look at this. I'm just I'm not even really going. I'm just kind of making sure the Vayne can't get to my backline and actually do anything. And then when, I, when the opportunity arises, I just turn around and kill whoever's still in the team. So we got a really, really good fight there. Like, really, really good fight. And that should be enough for us to straight up go for the Baron. Um, Vayne can't really contest this by herself. It's, you know, as much as she'd like to think she could do a, like a 1v5 moment, it's, it's a little bit too difficult to make that work. Um, so Vayne can't really contest this by herself. She looks like she, she thinks, she looks like she thinks she can, but she can't. And you can see she's desperate to get the kill onto Braum here. And so I'm like, okay, fine. Timo like flashes over the wall. He does a lot of damage, and also the blind is obviously great versus Vayne at this stage in the game. But we also have our base to worry about. Now Vayne's like, okay, I can see my time. I'm like, okay, fine. I will just like run at you, and I'm gonna sit on top with my Sunfire Cape, and, and, I have, and there she just dies. Like that was a really, really big like XD moment from Vayne because she thought she could kill the Braum and then kill me really quickly, and I just turned on her and slapped her on the head with a, with Dead Man's Plate plus my first ability, especially me being at max level. It's it, it actually hurts quite a lot. That first hit hurts quite a lot, and Vayne kind of bit off more than she could chew. And at this point, with the Vayne dead, I'm like, I need to win this game now. I'm sick of this game. Uh, I'm gonna run it down mid with my with my Baron minion wave, and I'm super tanky. No one can stop me. I'm just gonna win with the minions. Zed decides to flank for some unknown reason. Kaisa gets a really really nice ult off to try and take the Zed down here. Flashes in, gets another Q, which gets the uh, the Evelyn killed. Another big scalp taken down. We have the Baron minions to work with. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to tank the... Literally, look, watch, watch. I tank the Nexus the entire time. Look at, look how ridiculously tanky I am. I'm, I'm this, this whole thing, I'm just tanking the entire team and the Nexus, and we win. And that, my friends, is how you play one of the most ridiculously easy champions to play in Wild Rift, who is absolutely super broken right now, and you gain free elo. I hope you enjoyed it.